you know, when you think of drones, you think of only one kind of system. But the truth is, there are a variety of drones and they have different roles and uh, different functionalities. And I think we'll give you a small look at the kind of drones available in the market, being made in India, and uh, which are or will be used by the Indian Armed Forces. So drones don't fly just above the uh, surface of the Earth. They also uh, fly close to space. High altitude flying drones that uh, are available are the pseudo satellites, and this is the example of pseudo satellite. It's a high altitude, long range, a long endurance drone. It is being uh, made in India uh, by uh, a startup uh, called uh, New Space. Uh, the function of this drone is to stay up in the air for months to an end and do uh, surveillance, perform communication services, and basically give you a bird's eye view through the year over uh, say your border areas or uh, over areas of concern and these aircraft are very difficult to shoot down because they fly right at the edge of space uh, they are also cost effective because once it goes up it stays up for months to an end and uh, the Indian Air Force is looking for this there's a project which is on with, between Hindustan Aerodotics Limited and New Space to develop this project for the armed forces another kind of drone uh, is uh, kind of like a multi-role drone so this one, like the Alpha S for example, this is designed to be launched both from the ground and from the air. So it can, it has wings that fold. One that's in the air, it has, it can do a multiple variety of jobs. It can do surveillance mission, which is checking out targets in the ground, feeding back information to the ground commanders. Uh, it can do communications relay, and it can also strike down a target if needed. So this can be a Kamakazi drone. If you find if the drone finds a target, the operator tells it to give it a command. It can actually go and destroy targets like say tanks, armored vehicles, command posts, and bunkers. So drones also have drones inside them. This, for example, is a micro munition. This can be carried in a larger drone system, and it can be launched from a drone onto a target. So this basically will be the ammunition on a drone. So it can fly autonomously itself. It can be launched from a drone itself. It, and it can precisely hit targets at long range. Beyond the fixed wing, there are also a variety of drones which are uh, rotor based. They can be take off, they can take off vertically and hit targets. Like this, for example, is a quadcopter kind of a drone which can carry munition under it. So it can go to a target, take off vertically over a short distance and uh, hit, identify and hit uh, targets uh, whenever needed. Drones don't always work alone. Uh, in fact, the, the buzzword is swarming drones, in which a number of drones operate together to take down targets. You know, there's safety numbers. So if you have 100 drones operating together, uh, the probability of them uh, hitting the target is much higher. And India is very keen, and there are a lot of Indian companies uh, which are trying to make the concept of swarming drones. And this involves uh, artificial intelligence. It involves a lot of networking. It's a very complex uh, science which goes beyond just the hardware. The real Money here is in the software, on, in, in the concept of how the swarming works, how the mission profile is fed in, and how the drones execute their work. Drones also work with humans. Uh, so you can have a, there's a concept called teaming concept, in which there's a manned aircraft, like a Jaguar, say, for flying uh, with a crew of two pilots, which has a wingman on its side. It's called fused teaming, that's what this company calls it, uh, New Space but it is teaming of an unmanned and a manned uh, platform together where the crew of the fighter jet, uh, which is very survivable uh, because it is a fast moving jet, can direct a drone into a more dangerous situation where there can be a, a, a safety issue for the aircraft and the pilot itself. So working together, a manned system, directing an unmanned system onto a difficult target, that's also a part of the future that the Indian Air Force is looking for. One more category of uh, UAVs are uh, the male and the hail versions, the medium altitude uh, long endurance and the high altitude long endurance uh, drones. Now these are top of the end technology drones. Uh, as of now, India's using Israeli drones for this because we don't have our own capability. A lot of Indian companies are already working on it, uh, especially uh, drones which can stay up in the air for long times, 12 hours, to carry a weapons payload, uh, a missile which can be fired something like the Predator drones that the US, the US operates. Uh, India wants to develop these drones on its own and there are 
three or four companies which are trying to do it. One of them is doing it completely on its own without foreign help. Another one is seeking Israeli assistance to do it. Uh, it's still early times to see which one will succeed. But a lot of interest in this category of drones, which is uh, at the cutting edge of military applications or uh, applications of destruction that drones can do, that you know, target, see it, uh, destroy it, whether it's an air to air target, whether it's an air to ground target. So amongst these uh, loitering munitions or kamikaze drones, basically drones which take off, uh, hover over target and then collide into the target to kill it, this is the ALS-50, developed by Tata Aerospace. This is already in order by the Indian Armed Forces. A very unique drone. So this is a drone which can take off vertically. As you can see, it has got uh, these rotors over here. So reach a certain altitude and then fly vertically with its the propeller at the back. Now this drone has a range of 50 kilometers. It can hover 50 kilometers and defy, track and take down a target. And, and if the target is not available, it can be recovered. It can come back and uh, save uh, money from the mission. The most critical aspect of a drone is how it is controlled. Uh, you know, a drone has to have a ground station which tells it what, tells it what to do, which controls it, which sends out signals. And right now here, uh, we're going to show you a, 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 a drone control center. It's been developed indigenously by Tata. Uh, it's a very unique system. It's the first time that a whole control center has been developed in India. You see here a set of consoles uh, which control different aspects of how the drone flies, right? Uh, all of these are, uh, uh, they can be replicated. I mean, they're all the same, but uh, they have different functions that they can perform. Uh, for example, this can be used to fly the drone itself. It has a joystick, it has controls, it can feed in a path which the drone needs to take. Uh, it can also direct uh, the, the various modes of flying that uh, it requires. The second console, for example, can operate the payload on the drone. For example, this payload is perhaps a camera which is tracking an aircraft uh, or, a, or a, an aircraft flying on the runway. So, these two controls uh, are, which are made in India, which have Indian software, which have Indian hardware, are a critical element of how drones are flown. And uh, this unit, for example, uh, it's right now we will show, but in the, in the real world, this would have an antenna on top, which would have a satellite link, it would have its own power backup, and it would operate as a standalone facility, which can be transported easily uh, uh, and can be used to set up, send out drones of all variety, be it small ones uh, to larger ones which have ranges of a few hundred kilometers.